Welcome back guys and in this video we're going to discuss a little bit about the project structure that we created in our previous video using Vue CLI. So the first directory we see here is the build directory and this directory is used by Webpack to kind of pack all of our resources in our application together into more compact files. So say you have five different JavaScript files in your application, it'll basically condense all those down to a single JavaScript file and inject it into your main HTML file here. As you can see here, this is the base template for our application and all it has is a div tag with an app ID. Of course, the normal HTML elements that started off the HTML head and body. So it's unlikely that you're going to need to edit anything in the build directory itself. One thing that may catch your eye is the view loader. Um, basically, view loader allows us to create a .view file that includes and combines our uh, CSS, our JavaScript, and our template file uh, for our view components. And basically allows us to put that all into one file and then later uh, Webpack will extract that out into individual JS files, CSS files, and uh, template files. So the next directory we have is the config directory and inside of it is an index.js file. It has all the stuff uh, for the Webpack uh, server uh, config in it. So we have a port number, what port we want our application served on. If you know for sure that you're gonna be serving it on a specific port, you can go ahead and change this. Otherwise, it'll also be overwritten by the process environment.port object. Um, you can also set it to open a browser automatically when we run npm start, um, error overlay, and a few other things that you may want to take a look into. But the uh, really important one is basically the host, the port, and auto open if you're interested. Also, it has an asset subdirectory where you want your static assets to be served from. Um, we're probably not going to use it very often, but it's referencing this folder, the static folder here. Um, most likely we're going to be using the assets folder here for statics and we'll talk about that in a later video. Then we have our node modules directory and of course you probably are aware that our node modules are the dependencies our application run on. Um, so we got a ton of node modules that are installed automatically there. Let's go ahead and skip over the source directory for now and we've already talked about the static directory. Uh, we can talk about a few of these files here. The eslintignore file tells eslint uh, to not lint or clean up or you know beautify our uh, build and config directories. Um, we don't need to do that for those. Um, the git ignore is your normal git ignore. Basically says don't upload the node modules or the distribution uh, directories to uh, git. They can download that after they download uh, the package.json file. Um, let's see. Our index file we've already gone over um, basically is just uh, the very blank template for our application. And of course, the, of course, the JSON file here has all of our dependencies in which the node modules uh, can be installed from. So let's get back to our source directory here. And the first directory inside of our source one is the assets directory. Uh, this is where we're going to put our images, music files, video, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post a link below. Uh, uh, this video to the differences between the static and the assets directory if you have any questions regarding that. Next up is the components directory uh, where we have all of our components, our view components that we'll put inside of here. We have a router directory in which we handle all the uh, single page app routes in our view app. And then we have our main.js file and it instantiates the main part of our view app, our view instance. And it tells us the entry point for our app is the app ID uh, located right here. So our application will be inserted between these two divs. It says that we are going to use our router that we're importing from the router that we saw previously. And it says that it has a component or a template file uh, of app. And app is this app.view file that you can see here has a template, a script, and a style uh, guide to it. And then we'll talk about this more in a later video. But to give you a basic understanding of it for now, basically Webpack uses the view loader to take each one of these elements um, and put them where they really need to be inside of our application. So for example, the style guide right here for the app.view uh, file uh, can be found inside of our source code here. If we go to our style here, 
uh, Webpack has inserted that, and it even says it right here. See, the source URL is our app.view. Um, below this one is actually uh, a source code for the style for our Hello View world. So we can see that it has uh, a UL and a LI and A attributes. Uh, so let's go back up here and we can see that if we minimize this, we have those same elements inside here. So basically Webpack takes these elements, individual elements, and puts them in our application where they're actually supposed to go. So that's it for this one. In the next video, we'll talk about the View app itself and get in there and have a little fun and see what View can actually do. And I'll teach you a little bit about components and stuff like that. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.